Good morning. It's cold. It's cold. It's minus 11. I'm starting the truck up now. Oh yeah, it's cold. Let's put a toque on. Okay. Put up our uh, mirror cam up here. what our load looks like today. And burr! Holy burr, it's cold out here. here and quick warm up here quickly but the sun is coming up behind us I guess not a cloud in the sky so all the heat just disappeared no clouds to keep the heat in not to cough. Grab a cough drop here. Yeah, it's now six six forty five. AM and the sun's already coming up. I guess daylight savings starts this coming weekend, I guess two weeks ago for you guys. I'll make it dark in the morning again, I think. But the sun will last longer in the evening. I can't remember which way it moves. Uh, let's spring forward. Yes, it'll, it'll make it dark in the morning again. I hate, hate daylight savings time. Just get rid of it. Stop changing the time. No need for that.
So, we just left Midway. I guess you guys saw that on the map already. Westbound on Highway 3. so heavy that I can't even get up to speed over here. I forget how slow a Super B is compared to the quad deck. And we're not even a max load. My steers are at uh, 4,980 kilograms. My uh, drives are at 21, 520. My uh, bridge, that's not right. That was my total. Hang on, hang on, that's not right. Okay, my drives are 4, 980. My bridge is 16, 540. We're only allowed to go 17, so 21 would have been whoa crazy. Uh, my my bridge is 23090. We're allowed to go 24. This bridge is well, the drives is what 460 from max. The bridge is 910 from max, and then the pup is only. 13,920. So that's 3,000 and... 3,080 from max. So overall total weight is 58,530 kilograms. Technically considered a heavy haul. All Super B loads are considered heavy haul. As the heat warms up in here and the sun shining up behind us here, it feels good feels good as we're getting some heat here. Yeah, so anything over 80,000 pounds is considered heavy haul in the U.S. And we are at 129,000 pounds. Slightly uphill, so <laughs> I'm barely making it to speed limit. Not even quite. We're at 97, 98 kilometers an hour.
<laughs> ah, man, I'm fighting that. I'm fighting that. Welcome to Rock Creek. Following the Kettle River here, and then it flows north while we're going to keep going west. Down to 50 kilometers. Well, we're starting at 50 kilometers an hour. Down to 45. 40. Might be our slowest speed we're gonna get to. 28. Meanwhile, you got an empty 18 wheeler just blowing by me. Faster than the little Nissan. Forget 18 wheels. Forget 18 wheels. I've got 30 wheels now. wheeler has three axles on the truck and two axles on the trailer so five axles I've got three axles on the truck three axles on the front trailer and two axles in the rear of that trailer so eight axles
everybody's uh, username online is actually 30 wheel drift because of how terrifying it is when you start sliding one of these around a corner. Come on. <coughs> got a little bit of speed around that corner. I know we got speed around the corner because it was flatter there. back down to 33 kilometers an hour. So in the U.S. you would need a special certification to run two trailers like this. I don't have that special certification. You need special certifications for everything, like haz hazardous materials and... I don't know how many certifications there are. If you guys are in the U.S., Class 1 drivers or Class A drivers, what are all the certifications you can get in the U.S.? In Canada, there's one one certification. And it depends on which truck you do your driving test on, if you get that certification or not. At least in British Columbia, I don't know if it's different in different provinces. Some car gonna come by me, they're gonna stay behind me. So at least in British Columbia, make sure you go to a driving school and take a road test in a manual transmission. If you if you do not you will be forced to drive an automatic for whatever job you apply for. I 
lots of double solid, but here, here it breaks up. Oh, we don't have our radio on. Maybe they deliver a load to trail and then go empty back to Princeton or something? Or up to that Ashcroft mine? I don't know. Yeah, so the driving school I went to only, only runs manual transmissions that way you only practice with manual transmissions and you only pass the test with a manual transmission and that way once you've passed your test you can drive anything in Canada that's legal to drive actually that's not true if you get your class ones in Canada you can drive everything except for a motorcycle. Motorcycle is the only thing that you need a separate license for or a separate certification on your drivers. So I have got my motorcycle drivers so I can I can drive if it's legal on the highway I can drive it. And when I go to the U.S., all those certifications I need, don't need them. In Canada, I'm allowed to drive hazardous materials and doubles and all of that. I'm allowed to do it in the U.S. as well. I could actually drive anything on the highway legally in Canada, US and Mexico due to IFTA, International Free Trade Agreement, and in any Commonwealth country. There may be some restrictions in some countries that I don't know about, but double solid. Now that I'm in a Super B, that's going to happen more often because I'm just that little bit slower.
minus 13. It's only getting colder outside. climbing left to do over here. started in 18th gear, we're now in 17th, down to 85, 16th, 75 kilometers, 15th, 70 kilometers, 14, 60 kilometers, 13, 15 50 kilometers 12 45 kilometers 12.45 and this is every gear including the splits 11th 35 kilometers including low gears so 11 counts the low gears as well Gear. We skipped one gear, we're down to 26 kilometers an hour. We'll even out at 27 kilometers an hour, and we're just going to stay here. So momentum brought me almost to the top before we got into our slowest speed. Shifting. Tenth gear, okay. <coughs> That's what I get for recording a video this early in the morning. Going from uh, horizontal to vertical body's trying to clear, clean out my lungs. Get a couple of gears in. We're not going to make it to speed up to the speed limit before the next climb.
14 degrees Celsius. Got up to 8, 15th gear, 72 kilometers an hour before we start slowing down, so we'll lose momentum a lot earlier. Here. I had a good question about um, shifting in one of these trucks that are automated manual transmissions. Basically it's two worm gears that move the sh shifter stick into the right gear. So I have no stick. Right. My stick looks a lot like a car's would look in the center console. So it's got reverse, neutral, drive, manual, and low. On that stick, you've got an up and down button, so you can shift manually up and down with those two buttons. In an automated transmission, they just call it 18 gears and you shift through all of them. They don't do direct and over, so you don't actually know if you're in direct gear or over unless you think about it and go, I'm in 11th gear, which means I'm in 5th direct. But all I see is 11th gear. I totally forget. If, if I'm direct or over on the splitter, it doesn't matter to me. It's not a thing I ever think about. Tenth gear, which would now be fourth over. So, no park on. The difference is there's no park on our shifter compared to a car. And you have the manual and low. And not the two and one you would have in a, in a car. So I'll, I'll talk about the low first. The low will pick the lowest gear that's safe to select. If you just want the computer to grab the lowest gear to go down a descent, just click that shifter to L, low. They've actually got both written down on the stick. There's an L and a little small low written underneath it. Kind of funny. Yeah, so this hill must not be quite as steep because we stayed in 10th gear, fourth over. So when you're going downhill, you just click to low. It'll pick the lowest gear possible. If you want a lower gear, hit the brakes a little and it'll keep selecting the lowest gear that's it, it, the computer says is safe to do. mode I can with those two buttons up and down buttons on the stick I can shift gears if I tap a button twice it'll skip a gear it'll, it'll 
basically skip the splitter. So you tap it twice and you go up a full gear or on the computer in here, two gears. So if you're in 11th gear in here, tap the button twice, you'd end up in 13th gear or in a traditional manual, you would go from 5th gear direct to 6th gear direct. Other than that, one tap. So one tap in 11th gear, which would be 5th direct. One tap would go to 12th gear, which would be 5th over. Another tap would go to 6th direct. And the computer does all of that. It, it, it is a little bit for dummies. It, it's simplified big time. There's a reason why they call us steering wheel holders. There is a lot less physical labor in a big rig that's automated. I wouldn't want to go back to manual transmission. The reason why I went to automatic was because of my ankle injury. Manuals after a few days of driving a manual, that ankle hurts so much that I, I really can't drive manuals for a long term. But even if I could, the difference is, at the end of the day of a full 16 hour shift, 14 hours of driving, Not 40, 13 hours of driving, 13 hours of driving, 16 hour shift, 14 hours on duty. The, the difference is, in a manual, you're tired at the end of the day. You don't realize how tired you are until you drive an automatic and at the end of the day it's like, holy smokes, I got energy to go for a walk. Things I can still do. <coughs> Woo. That was a big sneeze. I think I got the microphone far enough away. To blow anyone's eardrums away. Any other questions about automatics? I don't know if there are any other questions I could answer. We're going to start slowing down here. My quad deck, I wouldn't start slowing down until that corner, but... Turn our fan on. Mountains are always beautiful coming up and over this anarchist summit. start slowing down up there is I know there's a 70 kilometer corner here. I think I'll call it a day here at the brake check coming up in nine kilometers. I was going to shoot a video all the way up and over Anarchist, but dude, the Super B is so much slower. What I'll do at the brake check, I'll swap batteries and uh, record a video for uh, our ASMR channel. 
study, relax, sleep to the uh, sound of just the truck driving with no talking, turn all the radios off. And that video will be going down into the soil use and then back up on uh, Richter. that'll be a week away from now. Those videos come out on Sundays, I think. And I make videos, basically I just make an hour and 20, an hour and a half video of just pure silence, just the truck noise. And then uh, start clipping them together so the first video is an hour and a half second video is three hours and it just keeps adding up adding up adding up once I hit eight hours I restart back at one and a half hours so if you guys want eight hours of just truck noise and while you sleep it's kind of like white noise I work really hard to make sure there's no no audio no bings no no nothing to interrupt your sleep Channel's called Sleep with a Trucker. I know it's a bit of a naughty title. As we come up to our break check here, thank you guys so much for supporting me on this channel. Thanks for all the thumbs ups and the likes and Hopefully by now we're done testing what time the videos get released. And we're back in a new normal. Or who knows, maybe we didn't like any of the testing and we're back to the old normal. I picked the right gears coming down Anarchist. It worked out all right down Paulson and I had no issues so I think I'll be fine. Just have to pick like one gear lower than normal on my quad deck and it works out pretty good. So basically all the marks I try hitting on the quad deck just hit one gear lower and it works out. A little bit of snow up here. All the way down to minus 14. Definitely putting my jacket on to do this brake check. I always like recording videos right at the at the morning in the morning at dawn with the sun coming up behind us. It's always magic hour or in the evening with the sun going down behind us. When the sun is behind us, it makes all the shadows and everything a little more dramatic and more depth. You see more depth in the in the images. I always find videos there's that magic hour at sunrise and sunset facing out of the sun where you get the best videos the 
because at noon the videos all seem flat. You, you lose the you lose the three D effect. Anyway, I am out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really, really appreciate all your support. So we have some new members down below. Thank you. Thank you for joining and supporting. Really, really appreciate you guys. I saw some members actually up their support level. Thank you for that as well. Appreciate that. And remember, zero pressure. Zero, zero pressure. If you guys all of a sudden feel you can't financially do the level you're at, lower your level or stop altogether it's completely up to you we can still be friends you guys can still come and watch these videos i am out of here you guys rock